Richard Buckminster Fuller was born on July 12, 1895, in Milton, Massachusetts, the son of Richard and Caroline Fuller. Buckminster had been a popular middle name in the family for several generations. He was a boy with a natural propensity for design and for making things, but he was very far-sighted from infancy. He received his first eyeglasses at five years old, which was a life-changing experience. Bucky later said that this blurred vision established his early impression of the world as comprehensive rather than specialized. Upon graduation from high school, he enrolled at Harvard University in 1913, but he was expelled twice. The first time for entertaining an entire dance troupe in his dorm room, and the second time for his irresponsibility and lack of interest. By his own appraisal, he was a non-conforming misfit in the environment and was fired from the school. Bucky married Anne Hewlett, the daughter of a prominent architect, in 1917, and joined the Navy the same year. He had a modest naval career and was discharged two years later with the rank of lieutenant and an airplane pilot's license. Then in the early 1920s, Bucky and his father-in-law developed and patented the stockade building system for producing lightweight, weatherproof, and fireproof housing. But after constructing 240 buildings, the company failed due to labor disputes and short-sighted contractors. Bucky and Anne's first daughter, Alexandra, born in 1919, died at the age of four from complications of polio and spinal meningitis. Bucky became extremely depressed and turned to the bottle for solace. The couple moved to Chicago for a change of venue, but this proved to be an unsuccessful choice. By 1927, at the age of 32, with a newly born second daughter, Allegra, Bucky was bankrupt and jobless, living in inferior housing and on the verge of suicide. Bucky wrote that he was standing on the shores of Lake Michigan one evening, alone and desperate, when he experienced a flash of clarity while he contemplated his work. Rather than take his own life, he decided to embark upon an experiment to find out what a single individual can contribute to changing the world and benefiting all humanity. Being an engineer at heart, he set out to discover nature's own coordinate system and how it could be applied to humanity's greatest challenges in a practical way. He thought long and hard about sustainability and universal success, and what he later called livingry, as opposed to weaponry. He started with no preconceptions to find out what he could find out. After a year of thoughtful poverty in Chicago, the Fullers moved to Greenwich Village, New York, seeking work in a more progressive environment. Bucky worked diligently at his newfound passion for big picture problem solving and studied intensely, hobnobbing with influential artists, poets, and free thinkers. He sold his Navy insurance policy in 1930 to take over a publication called T-Square Magazine, renaming it Shelter Magazine of Modern Architecture. Through the magazine, he established contacts in both publishing and the architectural world while he developed and promoted the earliest of his progressive 4D housing concepts. With a detailed scale model of his 4D house, Bucky addressed any audience he could find. As part of a modern furniture promotion at Marshall Fields Department Store in 1929, one of the store's marketing staff decided that 4D didn't have enough pizzazz. This unidentified person coined the word Dymaxion, a combination of dynamic, maximum, and ion, to help promote Bucky's radical ideas. Bucky later trademarked the word and applied it to most of his more significant developments. Through his publication and the attention he attracted with his 4D dwelling machine designs, Bucky acquired financial backing to support his family and develop other prototype products. He established the Dymaxion Transport Company to build experimental vehicles. The revolutionary Dymaxion cars built in the early 30s were outstanding examples of innovative engineering, but bad luck and bad press caused the pioneering auto company to fail. Through these setbacks, Bucky never lacked support from his family, especially his wife Anne. But his eccentricity prompted his brother-in-law to write the following poem in 1935. Lady Anne, Lady Anne, keep the coffee hot. Bucky's found a sixpence and he's gone to buy a yacht. In 1936, he landed a position with Phelps Dodge, one of the largest copper companies in the world, where he helped to develop new products. Also, while he was at Phelps Dodge, Bucky was a guest performer in some experimental broadcasts for the newly formed CBS television company. He published his first book, Nine Chains to the Moon, in 1938, documenting his speculations about the fundamental structure of universe and of society. 
He also worked during this time as science advisor to both Life magazine and Fortune magazine. The latter hired Bucky to compose an inventory of all the world's resources. The results were published in 1940, supporting and inspiring his philosophy about the potential of the global community. In 1940, working with the British military and Butler Manufacturing in Kansas City, Bucky devised the Dymaxion Deployment Unit, the DDU. These round metal huts were essentially one-story silos which adapted well to the military's need for portability. It was later used by the United States Army as well. Also in 1940, as a testament to Bucky's self-discipline and an anniversary gift to his wife and daughter, he gave up tobacco and alcohol for good. Through his connections in the military world in 1943, he became Chief of Mechanical Engineering at the Board of Economic Warfare, and later was Special Assistant to the Deputy Director of the Foreign Economic Administration. Still, he invented, including adaptations of earlier work such as the oddly named Mechanical Wing Travel Trailer. Shortly after the war, he began consulting and addressing industrial audiences on principles of design science in the development of new products. He never lost sight of his hopes for manufactured housing, and the post-war market was perfect for further developments in the field. He worked with Beach Aircraft in Wichita, Kansas to develop designs and prototypes for manufactured housing. Unfortunately, this project also failed due to the lack of acceptance of Bucky's radical designs as well as powerful competition from house trailer companies using more traditional components. Fuller then began his teaching career. He accepted a position at Black Mountain College in North Carolina in 1948, where he began work on geodesic dome ideas. Many of his disciples at Black Mountain College became lifelong associates, and their experiments eventually led to his lucrative geodesic dome patents. In 1952, Bucky had earned the first of dozens of awards. An award of merit from the American Institute of Architects, New York Chapter, Bucky eventually received 47 honorary degrees in the arts, sciences, humanities, and engineering, plus scores of special awards including nomination for the Nobel Peace Prize and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Finally, in 1971, Bucky retired, and promptly became busier than ever before. The 70s was the perfect time for Bucky to popularize his global view, his philosophy of success for all of humanity, and his commitment to carefully wrought technology as a springboard to the future. He published his most popular book, Operating Manual for Spaceship Earth, in 1971, and was suddenly in demand at universities the world around. He was a widely recognized advocate of environmental consciousness, preaching more with less and the pursuit of clean energy and global community. He circled the world dozens of times, addressing audiences from high school students to world leaders. Bucky became somewhat of a hero to the environmentalists, to the new world thinkers, and the optimistic rebels of the 70s. This is evidenced in the posters that were produced bearing Bucky's likeness, his sayings, his poetry, and his art. His inventions and ideas found their way into numerous magazines. And Bucky even endorsed conservation-minded products. He's been the subject of plays, performance arts, and stage tributes, and he's been immortalized on postage stamps around the world as well. In 1982, John Denver wrote a song as a gift for Bucky's birthday entitled, What One Man Can Do. And of course, there are hundreds of websites addressing every possible aspect of the man and his works. The starting point for Bucky's followers is the Buckminster Fuller Institute, an organization that carries on many of Bucky's programs, award scholarships, and grants for world-worthy projects, and is a clearinghouse for related information. Bucky died on July 1, 1983, at the age of 87, a guru of design, architecture, and alternative thought. His wife, Anne, was comatose and dying of cancer in a California hospital. While visiting her there one afternoon, he suddenly smiled and said, she is squeezing my hand. He stood up from her bedside, suffered a heart attack, and died within the hour. His wife died 36 hours later. They are buried in Mount Auburn Cemetery in Cambridge, Massachusetts.